What's up guys, Kwezi here bringing you guys another tutorial. This time I'm going to show you guys how to make thumbnails in Photoshop that pop. Um, also, an option is to use Kayaka, another program that creates fractals, but we'll get to that soon. Uh, but I actually just recorded this whole tutorial and realized my audio wasn't on, but yeah, that's another thing. Um, so yeah, basically this tutorial will teach you how to get thumbnails that just pop and attract people to your videos. Uh, meaning like, if there's like a list of videos they see, yours gonna be is gonna be bright and attractive making people want to click on your video more frequently not saying like the video still gotta be quality like I you can't just rely on this for views but it's a nice way to draw people in so we're gonna I'm working in Photoshop CS6 so I'm gonna create a new uh, document 1280 width 720 height 72 resolution RGB color back background contents we'll just we'll keep that white it doesn't really matter um, click OK Double click that background and just control I or shoot, control U by mistake. Control I to invert in, invert it as I as uh, I accidentally said. Um yeah, so let's uh first we gotta get our fractals and uh, I have a tutorial on Chaotica which creates fractals very easily. Um, so you have you'd have to download that program, it doesn't take long, uh, but link to that tutorial will be in the description if you want to use your own stuff if you have time. If you don't have time, you don't want to use your own stuff, you don't trust yourself, whatever the reason may be, you can simply look up fractals on the internet. Um, they'll probably be a lot better than what you can create at first. It take Actually, Chaotica is really simple, honestly. You could probably knock out some really nice ones. But uh, this one is made in Chaotica, and it's really nice. I'll link it in the description, I guess, if you guys want to use it. I mean, if you don't, make your own. Honestly, I suggest you make your own. I didn't even make this. I'm not. I'm being very hypocritical right now, but I mean, whatever. Um, so basically, I have two fractals here. I'm just gonna overlay them both, or fill them, fill the document with both of them, and select them both. Right click, rasterize the layers. Um, set the top one to screen, and get this. Set the bottom one to screen as well. Hmm. Uh, but basically, depending on your fractals, uh, you wanna erase some overlapping spots so I'm gonna go to my erase tool the eraser I'm gonna go with 400 and a soft brush it looks like that um, and I'm just gonna on the top one I'm gonna just delete or erase some of these spots over here because this effect looks really nice and I don't want it to be ruined by the other fractal um, then I'm gonna go to the other fractal and it just has this weird moon thing here as you can see that like a little yellow thing I'm gonna just erase that maybe some other spots so it's not too bright and whatnot and then I'm just gonna select all these including the black layer below and merging them boom so now we have one layer and I'm gonna create a new layer put it below that fractal and go to my paint bucket tool and go to my black double click on that and I want to make this a gray so the RGB color is actually 17 17 17 and the number is just a bunch of ones. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six ones. So number one, 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 one. I don't know if that was six that I said, but yeah, darker gray. Boom. Fill it. Go to your fractal. Duplicate the fractal. Go to your filter. Distort. Wave. Um, all you're going to do is go to type. It should be at sign for you. Um, but you want to select triangle and you can hit randomize a few times if you want and then just click OK and then set that to overlay and boom you get this bright oh, oh my gosh thing um, and you we can just simply erase a few spots on that top fractal so like boom this will be this might be a little too bright there boom 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 that 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 works that's good enough and this fractal below it, we're going to be adjusting the opacity as we go, most likely. But for now, we'll just leave it. We'll just leave it at 70%. That's fine. I'm sure we'll come back to adjust it at some point. Uh, now, you can see we've got like a mismatch of colors. And like it doesn't really go together with like the yellows and stuff. We want it all to be one similar color. So I'm going to go down here to the effects. and go to gradient map. Uh, the effects is basically that half uh, colored in circle thing. And we want to set the gradient map to hue, and we want to pick a color. So I have a bunch of cool gradients down here. Forget downloaded them very long long ago. You probably have them if you downloaded any like, graphics packs on the internet. This, these are very common. 
um, and I'm going to use Vintage 14, whatever that means. Uh, it's a red one, and I'm just going to use red for now. So, yeah, that's basically the only logic I have is it looks fairly decent compared to the other colors. Uh, but we're going to be changing colors later on. Um, now we want to do text, and if you want to add like a picture to, this is the step you would do it in. Um, but I want to make sure I have my rulers out. So as you can see, I have rulers going along the side. If you don't have those, you control R on the keyboard, and they will appear. And then click the left one, drag it out in the middle, and wait for it to click. Uh, if you're using the same document I am, it's around uh, nine, eight point eight eight nine inches to be exact. Uh, and we want to go to our text tool then. Select a white color, boom, and I'm just going to click in the middle, and I'm going to type creating thumbnails that pop. And my computer is so slow, which is why I haven't been posting lately a lot, uh, because I'm getting a new computer soon. I've kind of been waiting on that, but I haven't got it yet, so like... I don't know. This computer is just rough at this moment. It's so old and just slow. And like, look at this. Like, nothing. Just text not going to show up for another like 10 seconds. Um, but yeah, so once I get my new computer, I'll be pumping out a lot more tutorials. Hopefully, more helpful things too, because I can do more. This computer limits me in some aspects. Um, but okay, there we go. Text. Um, now, I know exactly what I'm going to do for this text. You might not, depending on what your text says. But I know I'm going to keep this pop, this font, which is just a different font, because I want the pop. Like, pop means it pops, so I want that pop to pop, if you know what I'm saying. Um, so I'm going to select everything else. By the way, this font is True Lies Regular, so pop is going to be in True Lies Regular. And the rest of it is going to be in Knockout Medium, which is just a clean, simple font. Um, and I'm going to select it all then, and just go to my Move tool. So not select it, just make sure you have that layer selected. Control T, control or shift alt on a PC to make to expand this so it stays centrally. That might be a little too big, maybe like right there. And down a little bit using the arrow keys. And as you notice, pop overlays this text. Um, and in order to do that, all you need to do is go to your character palette, which if you don't have it on your sidebar or anything, you go to window, character, and it'll appear. And this one right here whatever this this is I don't know what to call it it changes the horizontal spacing but uh, in my case I'm going like 142 just to make sure my OCD is good and this I'm just gonna make 175 to please my OCD so I don't know what that is I think that's font size actually but uh, so that fixes the spacing so you can get some overlaps if that's what you want if you're not looking for that then ignore it then uh, I also want the pop color to be different, so I'm just going to go back to the text tool, select pop, and I'm just going to pick a temporary color, so I usually just go with this default greenish yellow. Boom. Change it later on, but we'll stick with that for now since it's just different. Um, then we want to double click on that layer to get the blending options, and we're going to add a drop shadow. All we're going to do is add it, make the distance 10, and go to gradient overlay, select the blend mode to overlay and select the opacity like 75 or 70 whatever and actually we can go and add an inner glow make it white and set that to overlay and just decrease the opacity to like 30 that's fine and also you can make the white text just a little bit grayer or darker just ever so slightly so boom just it's like very you can't even really notice it but just add a little bit of gray and then the gradient will slightly affect that a little more because if it's solid white then the gradient has no effect whatsoever and then I'm gonna go control H to hide that uh, marker whatever it's called I forget what it's called look at the guide that's what it is and I'm just gonna close that tab of effects and wow it came back okay and now I'm gonna add some bright spots and add some a little bit more color so I'm gonna go below the text area by the way you want you can add pictures like of yourself or whatever to this if like I don't know what you want to add picture wise if you have a maybe if you have a video talking about Homer Simpson you just add a little picture of Homer Simpson in the corner but keep it with the text because the text is not going to be affected by the uh, colors at all so it won't change colors at all so you want to go to that gradient map create a new layer so now we have a new layer above it we're going to want to go to the paintbrush tool select a white by the way, I'm changing my brush size with the brackets. If I forgot to mention that. 
Uh, and I'm going to go a size of about 500. And I'm going to go, mm, huh, what do I want to do? I'll go top left-ish, middle left, and right. And put that on overlay, just like that. As you can see, it adds some bright spots. And if you notice, this sort of area isn't very red. It's kind of like here and now there. So I'm going to add a, create a new layer, go to this white, uh, and use the eyedropper to pick a the brightest red I can find on here, which is this top left corner. Click OK. And then I'm just going to add like right there some red. Set it to lighten and decrease the opacity a little bit. So there's just a little more red. Mm, not very noticeable, but I mean, it's it's a subtle effect that just helps. And you can add it a few more space places if you so desire. Um, but I'd say that's pretty pretty good for now we're just gonna add one more thing which will brighten up everything um, which we might have to go back down to the original fractal which we had at 70% which I told you we were gonna change and just decrease it to 50 for now we might have to come back again uh, now go to that top layer uh, uh, not including the text layer so right below the text layer create a new layer Go to your paint bucket tool, click and hold, and go to the gradient tool. Then you, you want to go down to your colors, and for me, it's red to black right now. I'm just going to click this button, which makes it black to white. And gradient tool, make sure it's linear. And you want to click at the top, hold shift, drag down to the bottom, and you'll get a black to white gradient. And now we want to go to filter, dis not dis yeah, distort, wave. And now we want to set it to square and click OK. Then we want to go to Filter, Distort, Polar Coordinates, click OK. As you can see we get this cool starburst effect and we want to set that to Color Dodge. And as you can see we get a cool starburst effect that kind of brightens everything up. And I'm just going to Control T, uh, holding Shift and Alt and bring it out just a tad. Hit Enter. Go to my eraser tool, and as you can see, it's freaking really bright in the middle, and I don't like that because it's just too saturated. And I'm just gonna erase a little bit. So now, like, if it's too bright there, you can't really read the text. But if you, if it's like the middle's good, you can basically read the text, and sides should be no problem. And I'm actually gonna just maybe take that a little way. Okay, boom, there we go. Now it's time to get the colors down and everything. So first thing I'm gonna do is just go to my effects and add a vibrance. Increase the vibrance to like 40. I'm, I'll just do 45 and we can adjust the saturation later. I'm just going to bump it up to plus. Mm, that might be a little too much. Plus, hmm, I'll just keep it at plus three for now. Um, leave it at that. Uh, click below it and we're going to add a gradient map. Again, add it to hue. Sorry if you heard my phone. Um, and now we just got to pick colors. I like to roll with two gradient maps. So the first one. Should I use this one? This one? That's like hella blue. I don't know if I like that. This one? I'll use this one. This is pretty clean. Uh, and we're just going to duplicate it. Check this out. Go back to it. Pick another color that's similar, but not identical. That would probably work, but I kind of want some green. That should work. And that top layer then, that top gradient map, we want to go to the eraser tool and actually I'm going to click off, click on, uh, go to the eraser tool using the brackets. I'm going to make it with, I think I used 500 and go diagonally across and just boom. There we go. Actually, I'm going to try something different with this one. I'm going to control Z all the way back and make it bigger. So 900. And just do the center. That's pretty cool. Maybe if I inverse this the or reverse the colors. Hold on. See, th this is a lot of experimentation. So I'm gonna put that map below this one and do it like this. I don't know. I can't. Really, I can't tell if I like that better or not. But I mean, sure. I have it done. So I'm gonna stick with it. And now we can change the text color right here. So that's what do you guys think will work? Actually, you can't answer me. Uh, purple will probably look cool, but it doesn't. It blends in a little too much. Like I want something that pops. That blends in a little. I kind of like the green, honestly. Greenish yellow. That's pretty cool. Maybe just pink. 
pink works. We'll roll with pink. It it fits the color scheme a little better. So boom, there's a there. That's basically the uh, all the easy or the main stuff done. Um, I think we're gonna go back and change the opacity of the background layer. So I'm gonna increase it this time. See what we get. A little too bright. I think I'm gonna keep it down around 54. That works. And yeah, let's wrap it up now. Um, as you can see, it looks pretty decent now, but once we add these final touches, it'll look really good. So select all the layers, control G to group them. I'm just going to title it thumbnail, control J to duplicate, right click, merge group. So boom, there's your thumbnail. Uh, we're going to control J to duplicate, filter, um, pixelate, mosaic, and this is the Evan Eckert effect, I like to call it, uh, 40 cell size. Um, he used this on one of his tutorials that I saw and it was freaking dope. I use it a lot. Um, and then go to filter, stylize, find edges, then control I to inverse, and then set this to color dodge. You get this really sick effect. Um, I like to, brush is too big, go to 500, erase anywhere it's around the text, and then just erase where it's a little just too bright. So I like to keep it. Like that. I like to keep it around the edges too because it gives it a cool edge. If you look over to this left edge, it looks really nice. I really like that for some reason. I don't know why. It just makes me, mm, yeah, mm, mm, yeah. I don't know why. Um, and then I'm going to right click and merge it down. When you merge it down, it usually pops out a little more. As you can see at the top right here, that one popped out a little more. So I'm going to control Z and erase that a little bit a little bit, because I don't want that. Merge it down. Boom, we're good. Uh, then I'm going to duplicate it again. Control J filter, sharpen, sharpen more, and this is when everything will pop. So boom, effects just, now you can see them. Everything looks so much more detailed, but it's a little too detailed. So I'm gonna bring that down the opacity just a tad. And then I'm gonna create a new layer, paintbrush, or brush, go to white, bump up the size to about 600, not 700. Click right in the middle, set that to overlay, Decrease the opacity, about 20, and voila, there is your thumbnail that's bright and attractive and just makes people want to click on your videos. And I can imagine if you, you with your cute little face to be put right there screaming or whatever, making a rage taj or something, I don't know what people make these days, um, gaming wise, I was thinking gaming, I'm always thinking gaming, I don't know why, probably because I'm in the gaming community and that's who I design for 90% of the time, but um, yeah, so if you put like just your face or whatever because people really dig uh, just like that interaction face if you I don't know what I'm trying to say, but uh, Adding a little extra details or pictures or whatever will really increase likelihood of people clicking on your videos and whatnot uh, I personally don't do it cuz I mean yeah, that's my choice but yeah so, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It's been a while since I've made a tutorial because obviously I said my computer's slow and it's kind of wanky to do anything on. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Get me 100 likes. That'd be fantastic. Um, not saying you have to. I'm just saying if you get me there, that'd be cool because that's usually what I shoot for on these videos. But I hope you guys enjoyed everything. Uh, and I'll talk to you guys later. Hopefully I'll be posting tutorials weekly once I get my new computer. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Talk to you later. Peace.